Hi all, my name is Mass Barnkop from Kaiser Power Electronics. Welcome to part 7 of the DRR SSTC show controller build. Now this project has been very long in the making and in part 7 we're going to look at the safety features that I want to build into this panel. We did make the holes for these controls in part 6. So what we're going to do in this video is concentrate on how to use to make the output of this failsafe, I'm going to use a optical output with a signal going high and low in some, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to design that, but the output of this is going to a safety box with a huge relay in that is used to turn on and off the main supply into the tester coils. By doing it like this, I'm still completely isolated when operating the box here, if I operate it on battery. Other than that, I just have some indicator lamps and such that we will yeah, mount in as well. So, let's take a look at the circuit and get building. A good eight months have passed since the recording of the intro in this video, which also means that my plans have changed, and which makes me regret that I actually cut the holes in the front panel, because I'm no longer going to use all of them. So the plan is still to have a, an emergency push button at the front panel, but I do not want my safety relay to be in the safety control or in my show controller, but in the safety box. We need our safety relay to be near the main contactors that it's protecting or making safe. So the idea about having a encoded or fixed frequency signal is still the same. And that's uh, why I have this version four of a circuit here. My initial idea has always been to use a bond pass filter and then evaluate on the filtered signal. Now I tried to make this uh, the easy way with just RC, uh, low pass filters, high pass filters, did not work. I tried my luck with the two and four pole chipper, chipper filters, did not turn out stable as well. So right now I ended up with a uh, 74HC123 um, bond pass filter also using some flip-flops and uh, AND gates and such, but a lot more logic than first planned. But this is actually operating quite stable. So let's take a look at the schematic. I have my fixed frequency 555 timer sitting up here, oscillating at 666 hertz. We have a optical diode transmitting a signal over a fiber cable to a receiver. The receiver goes into two or a single package 74HC123, which operates as two low-pass filters. Along with the flip-flop and the AND gates, this creates a timing uh, where we get a window of band passing the signals between these two low-pass filters. Uh, I got this idea from a um, Fairchild Semi Designers Encyclopedia of one-shots, and also used the Texas Instruments uh, designing with the HC123 guide. To evaluate on the filtered signal, we just use a AND gate at the end and use two LM311 voltage comparisons. And I do use two, which is the exact same function, because we do have two circuits in the safety relay. So in order to not just yeah, putting this out in two transistors, I actually make it to one of these can fail and then we will have a circuit going into safety. So let's see it in function here on the breadboard. Now we have the 555 timer sitting here. We have our optical link, transmitter and receiver, and then we have all the logic ICs sitting over here. So let's try to turn the potentiometer of the 555 timer in order to show that we have a working bond pass filter. So right now we are at 360 Hertz. Up here we have the voltage going into the voltage comparators. We have a um, intermediate signal, the purple one, which is uh, between the 123 ICs, and then we have four, or the dark blue one, which is the output of our voltage well, comparators. So we would like to see the frequency change of the yellow input signal, see that the voltage rises that we evaluate on on the voltage comparators, and then if it's good, we should get a rising signal here, five volt out, at a frequency between 400 to 1100 Hertz. So I'll just try to turn the potentiometer here. You see it's rising and we are getting 
a stable signal at 600 hertz, then it's full output. I'm not quite sure, it's, it could also be this is just a 600 hertz to 1100 hertz where it's stable. Doesn't really matter as I can just adjust my fixed oscillator on the show controller. And if we go up in frequency here, see so now we're nearing 1100 kilohertz and bam, there it goes. And if I turn all the way up to 12.5 kilohertz, it's still turned off and we turn all the way down to 350. Still, it's all right to turn it down even more. How far down in frequency can we go? Down to six, 16 hertz and it's still off. So let's go all the way up again. Now we're at 300 and some 400 hertz. Turn it again here. Blue signal goes good. And as we go up in frequency again, it goes down. So yeah, let's get the uh, printed circuit boards made. Alright, the circuits have been made. As you have seen, I have constructed these two PCBs, but then I discovered I had to make a third, because open collector output of the LM311 does not mean totally open transistor, as the emitter is not. So I had to add some relays in order to get a good enough action to go into the safety circuit. So it actually has to be with the monitored two-channel input on the safety relay that the voltages that put out just m mixed up how the LM311s worked. So let's turn this on. So right now we are getting nothing as the emergency push button is pushed down. As we can see here, there is no output. So let's uh, release the uh, push button. And we now have our output signal here. So uh, let's put the optic fiber in. And now we are at the oscilloscope measuring 667 hertz, which is, is actually a bit peculiar because um, I don't think my oscilloscope is able to show 666 hertz. It will only show 665 or 67. That's a little weird thing that maybe someone could experiment with. All right. so. The circuit accepts the uh, frequency, as we can see both output channels, which are both two individual LM311s, turning out each their relay here. And by then pushing the reset button on the safety relay that would be in my soft start power box, we can activate both channels now. So this would turn on the main contactors. Pressing the emergency stop, cuts off the signal, releasing it back in. We activate both relays, but safety relay stays out until you go to it and do a manual reset. So as long as the safety chain here is okay, the safety relay will stay in. If any parts fail, the safety relay will cut out. And we can dismount some part of the chain, reinsert it and safety relay make sure that it stays off. Yeah, so now it's all that's left is getting it in the show controller suitcase. And just like that, the safety part of the show controller build has come to an end. And where I did have planned to have the safety relay built into this box and have all the push buttons for start, stop, reset and some signal indicating lamps, I found another use of all these holes. So this will actually be the power on off for the power panel instead. So optical output to the soft start safety controller box. And we have a key switch for the power optic output here. So uh, I actually need a key to insert here, switch on, and that will just power up the six optical outputs. Now to get the power on uh, everything else, 
we need another key for that. And then we have some key switches for each of these. Now there is a power switch for the analog interrupters, there's a power switch for the synth interrupter, and there's a power switch for the safety feature. Now I chose to split this up into this uh, as it's designed to be run right on battery, so I might want to save some power if not using one of these features. So we can of course push the uh, emergency button that cuts power and with the other circuit cuts the output diode in order to make a double cut on this. And after doing this you will have to go to the safety relay box to reset the safety relay. Thank you for following part 7 of the Tesla Coil Show Controller build. Stay tuned for part 8 and a side project where I built this soft start safety box that interacts with the whole safety part here. So until next time, see ya!